Okay, so we are almost to the point where we can start building our set. Technically, you could start building your set now uh, with everything we've done, the way we formatted all our tracks and our content. But before we do that, I want to talk a bit about editing our arrangements. We'll talk about editing arrangements once we get them into our set. We'll talk about making really quick editing um, uh, judgments and adjustments uh, when we're live on stage. But let's say we're still kind of in the pre-production portion of this. We haven't stepped on stage. Maybe we're in rehearsal. And we know that we want to edit an arrangement uh, beforehand. Let's talk about how to do that. There's a couple things we can do. And then again, we'll get into building our set. So I've got my song pulled up here. Well, let's say that I know we're doing a chop down shorter version of this. The first thing I'm going to do is do a, a file save live set as. So I'm going to go up here. Uh, I'm going to save it on my desktop. Let's say it's called You Keep Coming After Me Short. A couple things I'm going to do that are super important. One, I'm not going to save this in the same live project. Uh, I want this a separate live project, a separate live set. Each individual arrangement, each individual version of this is going to be its own live set. That's just a again, will dog it best practice kind of particular thing. Um, now, I am at the end of this, I'm going to make sure I do collect all and save so that all my content comes with it. But we're just going to uh, go get along right to it for now. Now, let's say for the sake of this song, this bridge is super uh, way too long. So what I want to do is uh, take this bridge and let's cut out this middle one. Okay, so we're going to cut out one of them. Now, if I hit delete right now, essentially what it's doing is just deleting the clips. I don't want to delete the clips. I want to actually delete time. So I want to take this section and this section and psh, pop them together like that. In order to make that happen, let's bring this back, we're going to do our edit time commands. And so the way to delete our clips, we could go up to edit. Yes, we get delete, but we want to do uh, what's called delete time. And so if I add, you know, if I think of my normal shortcut uh, for delete, it's just delete. Um, if I add shift to any one of our normal uh, shortcuts, command C, command V, then we're going to do that to time, not just the clips. Let me show what I'm talking about. So in this case, I could go down to delete time. Or on a Mac, this is our shortcut here. We'll add shift to it. So I'm going to do command shift delete. It's kind of hard to see. You may even not notice that it happened. So here's our bridge. And let's call this just so we can see this three bridge. Okay. I'm going to take this command shift delete, right? And it brings that bridge over to here. Okay. So now we could play this. This may not be great. We probably need to do some crossfading, but let's see what this sounds like. Bridge at four. Okay. Bridge. Yeah, it two, sounds like super three, low. Four. And then suddenly our pad stuff cranks in, right? You can see the pad, uh, wherever that is, right here. Those suddenly just cranked up and got super, super loud. Um, so we could go in and we could delete time. We'll talk about crossfades in just a moment. We could delete time. We could dupl duplicate a course. Let's say um, this is our big course here. And instead of going in this turn, let's do one more. So I'm going to do Command Shift D, which duplicates time. One thing I have to be aware of is my guide cue here. So this guide, if we listen to it, is going to say, I think, turn. Turn. Yep. So we're going to get rid of that one. And we want to just duplicate. This one's going to be chorus, I believe. Chorus. Yep. So we're going to duplicate this one. I'm going to click on it, hold Option, and drag. Put it right in measure before. And now we have uh, this. Chorus. Two, three, four. Okay. And we now have duplicated that section. Uh, so we could cut time, we could copy time, we could duplicate time, uh, we could paste time, we could add a section in the middle of a section. Um, experiment, uh, for the sake of time, I'll, I'll kind of move on, but experiment with all of these options here uh, to see what you could do. There's tons and tons of options available to you. Now, let's say I want to make that transition a little smoother. Uh, for the sake of this, let's do, uh, let's send this to master. Okay, and we'll turn off these sends so we don't uh, accidentally hear double. And let's hear what we have here. Okay. Now, uh, what I want to do... Actually, let's bring the original track in. That's going to help me kind of know uh, what I'm doing. Here. So let's make this master as well. One second. Okay. So let's listen here. Just tell them that. Come on. This is the original track. So keep on so that's a weird transition. I want to do a crossfade. Uh, I'm going to start here to here and let's fade just this one track, our original track. I'm going to select it and then do command option F and that's going to add a crossfade. 
Let's listen to that, then we'll do this across all our tracks. And just... So keep on moving, keep on speaking. Yeah, I could go in, I could dial that in if I wanted, uh, and you know, figure out maybe have that a little sooner, a little bigger. So keep on moving. Right? Uh, it's pretty convincing. I could dial it in even more if I wanted to. Now let's unsolo this and let's go, uh, let's take maybe from here, again, kind of similar, two measures in and we'll go two measures here. And we're gonna do a fade across all of this content. So I'm gonna select it. Okay, we're gonna go all the way up to the top. It's gonna take a second. All right, and then we're gonna do the same command, command option F. And that's gonna add a crossfade across every single one of our tracks. So let's bring our drums back in, bring our electric stuff back in, which is gonna help us kind of hear this. Drums is a really good one to kind of listen to. Let's bring the bass in. And now let's see what that sounds like in this transition. So keep on okay, now let's take original track out and hear what it sounds like. We could go in, we could get this dialed in um, exactly perfect, but it's worth noting basically with crossfading and with our edit time commands, it's super, super simple and easy um, to edit our arrangements and make them our own. Um, the worst thing I see people do, one of the worst things is see people live with like super long intros. In fact, I'm going to show you, as I was saying that, I was thinking of a song. I'm going to show you a song that I think is a perfect example of this. And I talked about this before. It's not to pick on worship leaders or music directors and there's nothing you know necessarily inherent with doing this in a church that makes people struggle with this but when you buy content from somewhere else again you feel kind of like you can't tweak it you can't change it this particular song here which again we've just used in the stems for this uh oceans has like the world's longest intro so let's listen to this just for a second oh going again i've got to do this stand by all right so now we can hear this four Okay, right, it's got this little violin thing, which is, you know, maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but it's just super, super long. And then we get in the piano thing. Intro. And again, if you like it, great, keep it. But if not, let's just start right on that piano thing. So what typically I would do is just grab this. I do uh, command shift delete. And again, I lost, uh, I think I lost my, um, my guide cue there. So one, I could add it back. Two, we're actually we're using audio one, guide, two, so three, cool. four. Okay. And then we're right into that, right? Which is super great. Um, and that's way better again than having to, uh, sit through that entire intro and, and just wait forever. So that's how we can edit, uh, our arrangement, trim it down, duplicate a section, delete a section. Um, let me show you one more thing though. Let's go back to, I'm going to go back to this. You keep coming after me, just default file, not the edited one that I did. And again, I think having those as separate files is super important so that you can get back to that edited, shorter version, longer version that you have. And you're not wondering what set was that a part of and trying to dig it up and find it. You have access to it there. Uh, let's say we wanna change tempo. This song is 83 BPM. Let's say because of the song we're doing before or after it, we wanna boost this up to 85. We're just gonna click here. We're gonna do follower to lead and we're back. And now our song- Intro, two, three, Is 85 four. BPM, right? Super, super simple to change our tempo. Let's say if we're gonna change key, um, what we would do is we'd select our stems. And when I'm in a time crunch, I just select all my stems and change key. Uh, if I really wanted to be specific, I could go through and say, okay, anything that's percussive that doesn't have mic bleed in it, um, you know, I'm probably not gonna have drums anyway. Um, anything that's percussive that doesn't have a, a pitch to it, I could probably skip like a lot of this percussion stuff, you know, as long as there's no pitch in it. Uh, I could skip that. I think effects probably has some stuff in there. So I'm just going to go through, we'll select all the, the bits that have um, key changes. Again, when I'm really in a pinch and I'm doing this in rehearsal, I just grab all of these files and just change the key. But I, I want to show you if I'm doing it right, this is how I would do it. So with all those selected, I double click. Uh, I'm going to change from warp to complex pro. And then if I want to go up a, let's say whole step, then I'll do this two semitones or two half steps as a whole step or I could drop it down like this. Um, and that's gonna, you know, just as simple as that, that's how I'm gonna change key. So this is really, really simple as you're kind of planning and preparing your set. Again, particularly worship leaders, I always tell people, drag your content in. Again, in a second, we'll talk about building a set, but look at everything once your set is built 
And then you're going to be able to go, let's change this tempo, let's change this key and get everything to have a really smooth, great transition. So now, now that we've talked about editing this, again, final step in all this, we got to make sure, collect all and save. Again, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do it, but go here, collect all and save. If we've got that new version, new format, because it's a brand new file and live project that we want to have. But now that we've got that done, let's talk about building our set. This is going to go super quick because we did the work beforehand and got the process right. So let's take a look at how to do that now.